Years ago, back in the 1990s and early 2000s, a biscuit joiner became a very popular woodworking tool. It seemed like every woodworker had to have one. And I am pretty sure that the reason for their popularity came down to two words. Norm Abram. Back in the before time, before YouTube, the only woodworking shows were on TV, and the New Yankee Workshop was probably the most popular. Norm had a big shop filled with expensive, super high-end tools. Kind of like most woodworking channels on YouTube today. But one tool that he was especially fond of, at least it seemed that way, was his biscuit joiner. Here was an affordable, handheld power tool that allowed you to make strong, invisible joints easily. So a lot of us rushed out and bought biscuit joiners. Basically, it's like making floating tenons. Or is it? Well, as much as I admire Norm Abram, a biscuit joiner may be one of the most useless power tools you can own. I know this because I own one and I've used it, but mostly I forget about it. Well, to be fair, biscuit joinery does have some limited uses, but probably not enough to justify its purchase, and I don't want you wasting money on tools that are just gonna sit around and gather cobwebs. But first, if you're brand new to woodworking, or if you're a maker, you may not even know what a biscuit joiner is. The tool has a little saw blade that plunges into wood, creating a slot. You make a slot in each piece of wood that you wanna to join together, then add some glue and drop in one of these little biscuits. So these these things are compressed wood and the glue causes them to expand a little, creating a joint. So the problem here is not that it works, it's that its effective uses are very limited. One of the most common uses for biscuits is edge joining panels, say for making a tabletop. Again, watching Norm Abram gluing up panels like this pushed me into buying a biscuit joiner. Thanks, Norm. Eventually, woodworkers came to realize that biscuits add basically zero strength to an edge joint. Just gluing up boards edge to edge is super strong on its own. Some woodworkers argue that, well, okay, but they are useful to help keep boards aligned when edge joining. And I used to think that myself, but I'm not really sure if that does anything either. There's so much play in a biscuit joint slot that it hardly draws the edges flush together. If you're gonna edge join boards, you're gonna need to use calls on the ends to keep them flat anyway. Basically, any assembly where you're joining long grain to long grain, say, face grain to face grain, or face grain to edge grain, or edge grain to edge grain, the glue alone is plenty strong. The wood will actually break before that joint does. The main purpose of any type of joint is to connect the end of a board to another board. End grain is very porous and glue alone will create a very weak connection. Dealing with end grain is one of the fundamental challenges in woodworking. This includes plywood edges, which are also fairly weak when only glue is used. So these connection points need some sort of reinforcement, either mechanical, like say using screws or nails, or by shaping the wood in such a way that physically holds the pieces together, like dovetail joints, or by cutting the wood in a manner that allows face grain to contact face grain, such as a lap joint or a box joint. In my woodworking for mere mortals method of woodworking, I prefer to use pocket screw joinery in projects where they won't show and lap joints where they will show. But my go-to method of joinery is the dado joint. Even though it technically isn't a long grain to long grain joint, there's enough surface area for glue to hold the pieces and the shape makes alignment a snap. If you're building something out of solid lumber that'll be subjected to a lot of stress, such as a rocking chair, you probably won't find any joint stronger than the mortise and tenon joint, but that's beyond the focus of this channel. If you've got about mm, 1,500 bucks lying around, there's a simpler way to make mortise and tenons by using a domino joiner. There's only one German tool company that holds the trademark and makes it, so don't expect to find any affordable alternatives. What it does is it cuts deep holes into the wood that special dominoes, blocks of wood, are glued into. These are called floating tenons and are arguably just as strong as traditional mortise and tenon joints. These are great for professional woodworking environments, but its cost places it outside the mission of woodworking for mere mortals. A similar but weaker method is to use a dowel joining jig. These have 
never really been extremely popular among woodworkers because they can be notoriously fussy to set up. Plus, the dowels are usually shorter and thinner than dominoes and are not nearly as strong. But they're relatively affordable, and I know a number of woodworkers that just swear by them. And that brings us back to the biscuit joiner, which is basically a floating tenon, only a lot crappier. <laughs> the biscuits are just too small to provide much additional strength to a joint. So where are biscuits effective? Well, I think they're a pretty good way to strengthen up miter joints, which can be fairly weak with glue only. But a biscuit joiner cuts pretty wide slots, so you can't use it on really very narrow boards. You could use it to cut slots in the corner and glue in a spline, but that's a little tricky with a biscuit joiner. And Making your own spline cutting jig on the table saw is pretty easy and it's pretty fun to use. And if you're making miters that aren't gonna be subjected to a lot of stress, say just a picture frame that just hangs silently on the wall, you can get away without any reinforcement to the miters at all. Or maybe use some of those corrugated joint fasteners on the back if you want. Biscuits can be used to join the ends of boards to the edge grain or the face grain. They'll definitely provide more strength than glue alone, but not a lot. If your boards are too narrow for a biscuit to fit this way, you could join them together like this with the biscuit going across the faces. And you'd probably want to put that on the back side of your project where it would show. But again, I would just prefer to use pocket screws, dados, or rabbits. For cabinet face frames, biscuits are a viable option and might be a little helpful for attaching them to the edges of a plywood cabinet. But you really don't need them at all for this use. There are some other uses, but I don't really find any of them to be a compelling enough reason to own a biscuit joiner. Ultimately, I believe that even beginning woodworkers can learn simple and more versatile techniques than biscuit joinery. And if you're looking for an effective, proven step-by-step -step method for learning woodworking that just cuts through all the BS. I want you to head over to theweekendwoodworker.com and check out my online woodworking course. You'll be able to build your very first project this weekend with absolutely no experience. Or a biscuit joiner. Thanks for watching everybody.